you guys. I wanted to show you this really fun thing that I've been working on. Thanks to uh, Ted Green, he's a jazz, he was a uh, jazz guitar player who did some videos on Baroque improvisation. So this is like Baroque or classical. And they, the composers like Bach and that, they used to actually improvise back in the day, but it kind of has been lost and people generally just perform the piece as written. And uh, a lot of times, because you're just playing what's on the pa paper, you're not really going to understand too much about what's really happening. So it's a lot of fun to actually understand the, um, the tunes that you're playing as far as the chord progressions and stuff like that. And uh, changing keys, modulating, and improvisation is really fun. And I thought I would do this video and hopefully some others um, that will explain this a bit more. And um, I've transcribed a couple or, of uh, Ted Green's videos and, and looked at them and I've looked at other you know things by Bach and and um, if you have understanding of harmonic harmony and uh, chord progressions that'll help a lot and if you know triads as well and also um, not just the triads but inversions and open and closed voicings of the triads and um, so what I'm going to do is just walk you through a little example I just played a little progression and you might not have noticed but there was a descending bass line chromatically at first and then diatonically so I'm going to just walk you through this example and it's G minor so that's the one the G and then when I go down a half step, that could be considered the, the five chord. So that's a F sharp. So that would be part of a D major or D7 chord, which is the five chord. So the five chord is often dominant. And um, so you don't have to just play the roots of these chords. That would require, that would result in more um, larger movements in the, in the roots in the progression so so we're going to start with G that's G minor and then we're going to go down to F sharp which is the D which is the 5 chord and then when I go down to the F that's going to be the G7 so that's actually the one but it's made into a dominant chord and that will lead down to the C major which is the 4 but it's made into a major so you can see that the the um, the one chord is made into a dominant which leads down to the C. So G7 is a 5 to 1. If you want to consider it a temporary modulation, the, so we are expecting a G minor and we played a G dominant and then we went to C major instead of C minor. And then, so that's the E, so G minor, D, D which is the 5 chord, G7, which is the one dominant, and then we have four major, and then we go to E flat, which is the um, four minor now, which is what it was originally in the key. And then when I hit the D, I'm actually playing a G minor, so that's the fifth of G minor. And I could keep going down chromatically, but I'm going to just show you a variation where now I go down to the C. So that's C minor, which is the um, four chord again. And B flat can also be considered like part of the C minor seven if you want to look at it that way. Um, or you could consider it the B flat of uh, G minor as well. So there's different ways to look at it. So I'm probably going to prefer that to be the G minor. Sometimes there's a like a, a suspended, so instead of going, if I go like this, B flat and A, you might think, well, B major, B flat major seven or something. But as soon as I hit that G, now I got G and B flat, which is the G minor. So let's say that we've got the C, which is the C minor, and then we have B flat, which is now G minor, 
Now I hit the F sharp, I jump down. So I'm actually playing a D7 because I'm hitting the C in the melody. Sometimes there's a suspension like I mentioned. You don't have to just play the chord tone which would be the A of D7. but So then I go back to G minor. So that's how it ends, the one. So you can see that these are mostly one, fours, and fives. That's pretty much the most common um, chords. There's, I can show you in other videos, if you do a cycle of fifths or something, you can go through all the chords in a key, or some of them, that aren't just one, four, and five. But that is the way that I've interpreted the descending line. And... Um, So here I went down diatonically, and then I went from the B flat down to the F sharp. So that's a third. So the, another way, instead of looking at chromatically, diatonically, scale, scalar-wise, of the of the root motion, and then you've got thirds. You can jump in thirds in the bass, and you can also you can pretty much do almost anything, but. Um, like I mentioned, the cycle of fifths or fourths, that, that moves in fourths and fifths as well. And those are really common um, movements of the, of the chords. And then um, you can also go ascending. Like that. Um, and we can talk about that in another lesson. But one thing you can do is look at the, uh, the uh, bass. Take the bass line that I've given you. make up other so I went like this so so you see how I went ideally you want to get to a point where you can make up really nice melodies but at first you just want to be able to play the two lines so you've got a bass line and you've got a melody line and the bass doesn't have to be just in the low strings it can be pretty much right up to the, the B string, if you wanted to, like that. The other thing to note is you can make the progression um, the upper, upper line. So you can consider the, the, the upper line to be the, the one that reflects the chord progression. Like instead of this being the bass, that could be I could go something like so I'm, uh, that's actually you know so you're playing the melody in, in the lower line and the chord progression in the upper line and you can switch so you can get really complex over time and then you've got like I said with the dominant you've got modulation so instead of playing if I go um, D if I want to play a, let's just say D, D to G minor, I can also go G major. So that's one way to, to sort of do key changes, modulations, is to play. If you're if you're expecting a minor, play the major, and if you're expecting um, major, then you play minor. So you can use that as a way or any chord that you were playing you could make into a dominant chord and um and then modulate so when i was doing g minor 7 i can go up to a7 so i went like g minor I, so I went A, A7 to D minor, or I could have went, I could play D major. So ho, have fun with that, but what I would suggest is just take that line that I created, Just 
kind of play around with the melodies and, and just make sure you keep hitting that bass line. And um, that's so much fun. So, and the other thing is you can modulate that. If I mean, you can transpose that to, um, if I go A minor. So that's A minor. And if I, every time I go down a half step, I'm basically playing the dominant chord. So I went A minor to E, which is the five chord. If I go down to the, if I play the D, that's the dominant. So if, so basically, there's a similar pattern every time. If you if you do it in another key, A minor down a half step goes to the E seven or E E major. So that's the five chord when you're down a half a step. And um, anyways, hope that hope you guys like that. And I've attached a little um, PDF uh, tab that shows the bass line and that little melody that I made up in the beginning. And um, you'll be able to uh, check that out in the description below and uh, play with that and let me know what you think. See you guys.